on this episode of Cursed. My name is Kitty Banks, and I am cursed. I am scared for my life. Something pretty big walking around. The eyes of the thing were red. I felt my bed lift off the floor and shake like a seesaw. I think I pissed it off. My name is Lawrence. My ex-girlfriend put a voodoo curse on me. Bad things are gonna happen to you. My name is David Marsh. And over the last 30 years, I've seen people affected by curses in very real, yet unbelievable ways. Those afflicted by a curse quickly become sick with fear and misery as they fall deeper and deeper into a dark and tormented existence. And eventually, it can lead them to their untimely death. This is Cursed. Different cultures have different types of curses. While their effects may be similar, their roots most definitely are not. Some people of the Middle East believe in the evil eye and a person's ability to curse another simply by looking at them and speaking specific words. The African-American hoodoo is comprised of the jinx, and the people of Germany speak of hexes and witchcraft. In Native American cultures, there are many mysterious and spiritual elements that encompass their belief in curses. Some believe that just being of Native American descent brings with it a power that very few outsiders have. This power, or ability, is the belief that a true Native American can place a curse on someone who has wronged them. This curse, once attached to its host, is near impossible to remove. My name is Kitty Banks. I'm from Pasadena, California. And I am cursed. I am scared for my life. I could get killed by it. My curse first started when I was in Arizona. Now going on two and a half, almost three years. I owned a business and I hired someone. Uh, yes. He was 100% Native American. I asked him one day to do something out of his job duties. It would just be really helpful if you do what I asked you to do. Yeah, I was hired to do my job. It's not my job. You're not leaving me a lot of options here. So if you're not going to do it, I'm going to fire you. He kept complaining, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this. I said, well, then there's a door. You can leave now. We're not doing what I asked you to do. You're fired. So you're firing me? I am firing you. He goes, if you're not going to keep me here, I'll deal with you later. You know what? You're going to regret this. I guarantee you're going to regret this. You'll see. Excuse me? You will see. He says, you know, be back. He goes, I'll take care of this. And he told me he was gonna get back at me. Excuse me. Okay, okay, get out. You will see. He told me he was gonna retaliate against me and put something on me, and I didn't believe it. And I just kind of like ignored him. A friend of mine, she told me, oh, he's fine. He's just upset at you for what you did. 
That's why I decided just to move on and don't be afraid of it. Well, everything seemed okay until things were happening and I just started seeing it was real. He told me they will lose everything and I lost everything. Started losing my clients, started losing money, and business went under. Some Native Americans can give somebody a, a curse quite easily just by going through the shamanic state. And as you pass that through that shamanic state, your will and intent is focused on a negative energy, on bringing this person that you're mad at, that you hate, that you despise, this horrible thing that will come to them. I started there at the house. It just got worse from there. When I first went to sleep that night, I saw like something was trying to open the door. The door was closed. I saw the door now moving around and there was no one in the house. Something pretty big walking around. Something that had pretty big feet and pretty big in size because it was loud and hard every time I took a step. The stuff that was going through my head, I was afraid they were going to attack me. I didn't know how they were going to attack me. I don't know what they were going to do to me. I don't know why they were there for me. the employee that she let go focused his will and intent while in the shamanic state to call a dark spirit and gave it specific instructions to keep harassing her, to keep giving her intimidation and fear. And he's enjoying this because it gives retribution. It makes him feel powerful because she fired him. He in turn is making her life unlivable. I was coming home late. I saw it at my front door. There was these red eyes. I just screamed and like, like, wait a minute, I just, this is not following me here. And I went upstairs, but going upstairs, I felt something was behind me. I just kept going and I didn't turn back and turn around. I went all the way upstairs and went to sleep. by the way because I was freaked about what I just saw. The eyes of this thing were red. Dark, red, glowing type. It was very demonic. When I saw those red eyes in the shadow, I was like, this ain't happening. This ain't happening again. You're not going to follow me here. I'd be sitting in the living room and I would see like shadows behind me. Like kind of like the glimpse of my right side and my left side. They would go from one side of my face to the back behind me. I was scared to go down by myself to the kitchen. I was scared to go to the stairway. I would always turn the light on that was next to my bedroom door before I even walked out. Then I would get to the staircase, I would turn the stair lights on. But I felt if I was in the dark, this thing was going to try to push me on the stairs or hurt me in some kind of way where it looked like an accident happened. Just recently, I went to the bathroom.
coming up. I felt my bed lift off the floor and shake like a seesaw. It wanted me and it wanted my soul. That's no question. And later, my ex-girlfriend put a voodoo curse on me. Just recently, I was in the bathroom. It was going after my life. It was no question about that. It wanted me and it wanted my soul. That's no question. This was a very active retaliation. People think you're crazy or think you're about a bunch of whatever, you know, it's not real. And it is real. Very real. And I didn't know how to get rid of it or what to do about it. I didn't know where to turn to, who to talk to. I yeah, went back home to the reservation right afterwards. But when I went to the reservation to try to find my employee, and that's when I saw him. He looked at me, he just walked away from me. Uh, anger? There was something that I saw when we were driving. I looked in the mirror, and I see the same red eyes. I know. <laughs> that they were sent by this person. He told me he was gonna get back at me. And now I'm in his home, his territory. I started crying and get me out of here, getting back home. When I woke up the next morning, I kind of realized that he could have killed me on the reservation. No one would have known what had happened. It can be a curse energy that, that you never feel safe. You feel persecuted. can be a feeling that you just don't want to go outside anymore because there's bad things out there waiting to get you. It can be this feeling of fear and dread just because you remembered something. And that is a very powerful thing to do. It brings a negative energy to the person that does it. It also brings a negative energy to the person they're aiming at. That person, if there's a group after them, there could be 20 or 50 or 100 dark spirits. I've never been that scared. It's really hard to scare me. When it comes to something that you don't know what it is, why it's after you, that's what scares me. I did pray for it to leave me alone. Please help me. I went to a pastor, and the pastor's overall words were, I, I, it's too strong, I can't do anything for you. It's out of my realm, it's out of my territory. If you believe in God, how can something be out of your territory, out of your realm? You should be able to face everything. He told me the only way to get rid of it is to deal with the shaman. It's a higher up and elder, it's an elder in Indian cultures to get rid of it. Right, people were scared. People were telling me that, you know, it sounded crazy and people were scared and no one was willing to help and no one was willing to take it on. They were more afraid of it going to them and just couldn't believe a pastor was scared of it out of all people. I didn't know how else to fight against it, so I started searching for a Native American shaman. 
when I went to a shaman. She did a blessing on me. The blessing that she did, she used the sage. And I still felt scared, I still felt worried. I remember the shaman telling me that wherever I go, these things will follow you. You can't get rid of them, especially if you don't know how to. As a Native American, we believe that smoke is part of spirit. And sometimes spirits will show up as smoke. There'll be this little wisp of smoke that just moves through the room. On the way back, I felt that things are getting better and better. So I thought that was it. And sure enough, it started happening. When I was laying in bed, it was midday, and my blinds were shut, so it was somewhat dark in the room. I felt my bed lift off the floor and shake like a seesaw. When it shook, it shook like, like this. Ooh, this. I think I pissed it off. I need to jump out my bed and run downstairs out the room. Coming up. This is not something you mess with, you know? Something that's very real and something that can attack you. And later, there are people out there that's all they do is they perform witchcraft or voodoo to actually kill people. jump out my bed and run downstairs out the room. The purpose of the dark spirit is to intimidate, to give fear, to weaken your opponent. It is totally underhanded and very effective. I've gotten worse and worse and worse. It's terror. That's what they want to give you is terror. gotten stronger. They got closer to me. The knocking on my I hear the knocking a lot. That's, to me is letting me know that it's still around. not something you mess with, you know? It's something you just play with. Something that's very real and something that can attack you and can go on to attack on your family. I'm still gonna pursue getting help from the shaman and how to protect against evil things like this. You better believe in it, else it's not going to be able to help you. So I do plan on staying in contact with the shaman and getting my blessings, going through cleanings and everything. It's very bad. People know how serious it can get. The terror of knowing that you are unable to stop a curse from tormenting you is a horrible state to live in. 
They dwell on the moment that they became cursed and wish that they could turn back time and stop themselves from what they are about to do. Native American cultures have deeply rooted beliefs and practices. The shaman or medicine man is a type of witch doctor who possesses abilities that seem supernatural. But the idea of a witch doctor is not unique to the Native American community and usually more closely associated with the practice of voodoo. Voodoo is a Haitian Creole word, which refers to mysterious forces and powers that govern the world and the lives of those who reside within it. Practitioners of voodoo refer to themselves as those who serve the spirits. Most of us know voodoo as a, a scary practice of spells and curses meant to inflict pain and even death on its victims. While the voodoo doll is the most common image associated with voodoo, it is not the only object used. And while we think of voodoo as meant to do harm, it is not its only purpose. For some, a voodoo practitioner can create a spell to help the intended person in their personal and even financial life. My name is Lawrence, and I am cursed. Bad things are gonna happen to you. My ex-girlfriend put a voodoo curse on me. This all started over money. I went to a voodoo doctor to get some financial help. And I ended up in financial ruin. Voodoo is a very, uh, it's a very secretive religion. It can be used for good and for bad. You have voodoo practitioners that will do a voodoo spell and they have these little dolls with supposedly something that belongs to you in the doll. And they put these little needles that poke you and then you get pain in your ribs, pain in the head. They use a lot of rituals. They still do a lot of chanting. It's in Haiti and maybe in Jamaica, in New Orleans, in Africa. But it's a religion that was brought in by the slaves. Well, when I met her, I was living uh, in Fort Lauderdale. Working on a car in the parking lot. I saw her, I had been watching her. You know, I've seen her around, you know. And we started talking. She, she was just one of them type of women that just, she just looked sexy, that like you could just eat her alive. You know, I commented her, how she looked, and you know, like to, hopefully we could get together, get to know each other better. And uh, we started talking more. She started stopping by, you know, hanging out at my apartment. We dated for about a month before we got physical. Then once we got physical, things started to change a little bit as far as, you know, want me to do this, or I better do that. If I don't do this, I may be sorry because she knows people. And she used to tell me that a lot and I would pay it no mind, you know. I would say we was together for about about the month, month and a half before I started seeing financial trouble. All of a sudden, my work started slowing down. The money wasn't coming in the way it was supposed to come in. 
And uh, I said, I need some kind of help because she knows people and offered someone that might be able to help me financially. You know, and I'm like, okay, well, what is he, a long shark, you know, drug dealer, what? How's he going to help me? And she explained to me that he was a food witch doctor. Somebody that helps doing spells. I just had a, a uneasy, eerie feeling. I could feel the chill on the back of my neck, I could literally feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing up. But I agreed to go see this guy. Okay. Okay. Coming up. And he had drained the blood into the bowl as he was chanting over the bowl. Like something right out of a horror movie, you might as well say. And later. Bad things are gonna happen to you. Money wasn't coming in the way it was supposed to come in. And uh, I said, I need some kind of help because she knows people and offered someone that might be able to help me financially. You know, and I'm like, okay, well, what is he, a long shark, you know, drug dealer, what? How's he gonna help me? And she explained to me that he was a food witch doctor. Somebody that helps to do doing spells. I just had a, a uneasy, eerie feeling. I could feel the chill on the back of my neck. I could literally feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing up. But I agreed to go see this guy. Okay. Okay. The place that we went was an area down in Miami-Dade, Florida, that they call Little Haiti. The house that we went to, it was like a little small white house, kind of shabby looking. There was chickens and ducks and stuff running around the yard. You could hear the dogs in the backyard. It's just the whole setting of the house just looked like something right out of a horror movie, you might as well say. The whole house was dimly lit with candles. There was an area on the floor where it looked like he had like a bowl or something in the middle that he would throw his bones and stuff in. And we sat around this on like throw pillows. This guy came out. The necklace that he had around his neck looked like it had teeth and bones or medallions and stuff all around his neck. But she introduced me to him and he asked me what did I want him to do for me. And I told him that I'm in a financial bind and I need to make some money. I will make you help. So he said, okay, I can do this for you, but for me to do this, I need some certain things, like a piece of my clothing, some of my hair. You know, as far as him doing the spell, he took the chicken and he had cut the chicken's throat, drained the blood into the bowl. It looked like he had bones and other things uh, that he had thrown in the bowl as he was chanting over the bowl. He was taking a chicken's foot and then going like in front of me like this on both sides. Drew some kind of design on my chest. Then he dipped it into the chicken's blood. 
And then it got real quiet. And then after it got real quiet, then he looked at me and said, okay, it's done. It looked like some type of talisman that he had wrapped up like in like a little burlap bag or type thing. And he told me that I had to carry this with me at all times. You need to keep this with you at all times. When the ritual was done, I did feel a little relief. You know, that I felt that it was going to work, even though I was kind of warned not to mess with the voodoo because nine times out of ten, that stuff can backfire. We had a, a case one time about a gentleman that uh, attended a voodoo ceremony. He went with the uh, idea that the ritual was going to give him good fortune, was going to make his life better. What well, kind of backfire? Instead of enhancing his life, it made it worse. After I saw the witch doctor, the relationship just went crazy after that. We argued about no, no, no. She said, you, you don't put nobody before me, not even God and your daughter. For me, that was like, that's it. I, I slammed my foot on the brakes. I'm done with you. I'm, I can't mess with you no more. I'm, I got enough problems messing with you right now. Do this. I say when we're done, bad things are going to happen to you. Don't you? That's when she told me, well, by what you just did to me, by right, you will have no good luck after this. Get the hell out of the house. No, All right, get out. you just wait. Get out. Bad thing. Get out. So she kind of like warned me with the hand out and all this telling me that I won't have no good luck after this. There are situations where someone is under a curse and the purpose for that curse is to make that person suffer, lose the meaning of life. It can be with pain, it can be hopelessness, or it can be depression. There are people out there, that's all they do is they perform witchcraft or voodoo. You need to keep this with you at all times. To actually kill people. It is done. And he told me that I had to carry this with me at all times. told me the amount of money that I was supposed to give him, I think it was like about three, four hundred dollars. But I had to have this money to him within 72 hours. And of course that didn't happen. For whatever reason, it, that didn't happen. So I felt that it wasn't supposed to happen because the events that happened after that. I didn't get it at the time. It was like I tried to contact the doctor and I couldn't contact him. I couldn't contact him because I'm trying to get her to help me say, hey, hey, look, you need to go see this guy that you took me to. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a hold of him. I'm going to get a hold of him. And that wasn't happening. One thing led to another where, well, I need to go out of town so I can go make this money. She called me to have me come pick her up. In the process of doing that, uh, I guess the cops must have been watching her or something because by the time I got her in the car and got around the corner, we got stopped. <laughs> cops made us get out the car. They had me open my trunk. Her luggage was in the trunk of the car. And they found what they was looking for. Coming up. 
She said, I can feel it. When I touched your hand, I could sense that there's something bad on you. Whoever put that on you was a very dark person. She called me to have me come pick her up. By the time I got her in the car and got around the corner, we got stopped. Cops made us get out the car. They had me open my trunk. Her luggage was in the trunk of the car. And they found what they was looking for. Controlled substance. And that's basically what the cop told me. He says, is this your vehicle? Yes, it is. He said, then you're arrest for what? Possession is nine-tenths of the law. If it's not yours, it just should have been yours. And so I got arrested. It's like everything after that just went downhill. Um, the ambulance that I had, that was with me in the car. So when I got arrested, they impounded my car. They went through my car, so I lost that. So I don't know what happened to the ambulance. It is done. Got out of jail. I can't find this rich doctor in no place. Can't find the guy. He's no longer there. And that was the the weird thing about how come I can't find this guy. When we both went to jail and got released, that's when it really started to disintegrate. Everything after that just went downhill. We're setting up for a concert. Somebody called my name, and as I turned to look, one of the pins from one of the motors slipped out. And the pin like this, like... You know, it did make me wonder. Nobody remembers calling me, but yet, I could have swore I heard somebody call me, and it was like, Larry. It's like Larry. If that pin would have hit me, it would have killed me. I'm on the sidewalk with my bike. This guy pulls out in front of me. He didn't even stop to look. He just pulled out. I just slammed into the right fender of his car, and I literally flipped over and landed on my back. It started to scare me because I'm wondering what the hell is going on. Why are these things happening to me? I kind of like started reflecting on the past. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. You have a curse you need to get rid of it. I was in Florida. This girl, she's a reader. She came over to me, grabbed me by my hand, and held my hand for a minute, and then told me, you got something on you very bad, and you need some help. There's something on you. I asked her what made her say that. I said, you don't know me from Adam. She said, I know, but there's something I can feel. When I touched your hand, I could sense that there's something bad on you. I can help you. I can help you lift it. She had told me that she could lift the curse off. Don't worry about that. You know, as long as you do this, you're going to be all right. But it's like, okay, I tried that way. You know, it's still something they're hindering. Whoever this person that put this spell on me was supposed to have been a very powerful, dark person. I never heard of anyone undoing a voodoo spell that is not familiar with voodoo. Because you have to fight fire with fire. You have to know what the other voodoo priest did to you in order for you to counterattack. Every time I'd go to somebody to try to lift the curse off. 
something would happen to deter me either. I'd get the monies, but I ended up needing the money for something else. To pay this bill, to pay that bill, or something to break down, or I couldn't get the money in time. One way or the other, something would always deter me. It's been a real struggle. I've been struggling with this for the last 11, 12 years. The more things have been happening the last few years, I believe it's true. My girlfriend had the wish doctor put a curse on me. I try not to think about me never getting no help. I try to hope and pray that I can get help, you know, that I get that blessing that I need to get this off. Of.